Hello everybody, this is Ankit. I am here to give presentation on the assignment 3 SPI device programming and pulse measurement. Now let's look at the objectives of this assignment. At the end of this assignment you are going to learn the basic programming techniques in Linux, SPI and GPIO kernel modules. You are going to learn the software structure of the SPI driver and the GPIO interrupts. You are going to develop a user application to measure the distance and to display the animations based on the measured distance. For this assignment you have been provided with three hardware resources which include Intel Galileo Generation 1 Development Board, the second one is the ultrasonic sensor HCSR04 and the third one is an H cross 8 LED matrix which has been equipped with MAX7219 chip and its driver. This is how your Intel Galileo Generation 1 board looks like. From here you can see that the pin numbers IO1 to IO13 ports are uh, provided. Uh, you are going to use few of these ports in this assignment. This is your ultrasonic sensor. It consists of uh, transmitter and the receiver and uh, it is a 4 pin device. You can see the 4 pins here. VCC, trigger, echo and ground. Now let me explain the measurement principle of this ultrasonic device. Uh, when you want to measure the distance, you transmit an ultrasonic wave in one direction the and start the timer as soon as you launch the wave into the air. The ultrasonic wave then spreads into the air and when it finds an obstacle in its path it is reflected back from that obstacle. The ultrasonic receiver receives this reflected wave and stops the timer. Now you have uh, two time uh, two time available with you. One is the time at which you launch the wave into the air and the one the time at which uh, the reflected wave was returned. The difference between these two time gives the time it took for the ultrasonic wave to travel from transmitter to the obstacle and from obstacle back to the receiver. Therefore the time divided by two will give you the time it takes from transmitter to the obstacle which is what we require. Uh, the recorded uh, times can be used and to find the distance. The distance can be calculated using the formula S is equal to 340 into T by 2. 340 is the ultrasonic spread velocity in uh, air uh, and is measured in meters per second. Now technically how is this concept implemented in the program? Initially the trigger and the echo ports are set too low. Now to send the trigger signal you have to make the value of the trigger port too high for a period of 10 microseconds and then is set back to low. Now as soon as the uh, trigger pulse has been initiated you start an interrupt handler onto the echo port of the device. The echo port of the device waits for the rising edge and the falling edge uh, for the echo signal. Now as soon as the rising edge is detected, rising edge is detected, the time at that point is noted down and uh, as soon as the falling edge is detected, the time at that point as well is noted down and the distance can be calculated using the same formula as already discussed. This is the timing diagram. You can see that a 10 microsecond pulse is sent to the trigger input. Uh, the ultrasonic wave internally converts it into an 8 cycle sonnet burst and transmits into the air. This is the received signal at the echo port. This is the rising edge which needs to be detected and this is the start time. This is the falling edge which needs to be detected and it is the end time. Now let's look at the pin configurations that we are going to do. Uh, the four pins of the ultrasonic sensor VCC, trigger and echo are connected echo and ground are connected to the 5 volt GPIO 14, 15 and ground respectively. Now this is an H cross 8 LED matrix with max 7219. You can see that uh, it consists of an H cross 8 LED matrix display and a max 7219 chip. This chip is equipped with the driver mm, and you can see the pin numbers pins VCC, GND, DIN, CS and CLK. Uh, the to operate the LED matrix you need to first initialize all the registers of it with proper values. The initialization values are as follows. Uh, the decode mode which is at register 0xx9 is set to 0x00 which means that we do not need any decoding. The intensity mode uh, at register 0xxa is set to 0x04. The value of this intensity can vary from 0xx0 to 0xxf, xf being the highest intensity. The scan limit at the register 0xxb is set to 0x07. The shutdown mode is set to 01, meaning that we are going to operate the device in the normal operation. Uh, the pin configurations of this device, uh, the VCC is connected to the 5 volt supply of the Intel board, the ground is connected to the ground, the DIN is the serial data input which is connected to the IO11, the CS is the chip select input which is connected to the IO10, CLK is the serial clock input which is connected to the IO13 of the Intel Galileo board. 
Now let's look at the applications that have been developed. In the task 1 assignment we are going to develop a user applications to measure the distance and display a dog based on the measured distance. For this assignment I have developed two threads thread underscore transmit underscore SPI and thread underscore ultrasonic underscore distance. GPIO pins are initialized with proper values in the directions based on the distance measured by the sensor and sends messages to run the dog correspondingly. That means we have different patterns that are going to be displayed onto the LED display. Now ultrasonic distance principle has already been explained and the same has been implemented here. Let's look at the code. Um, this is the code for the user application in the task one. This is RDTSC which is used to record the timestamps. Then you have some small functions like GPIO export, GPIO unexport, set directions, get directions. All these have been uh, moved to a separate function so that just a call to them will give you the values you require. Uh, This is the thread underscore transmit underscore SPI. This is responsible for sending the messages to the LED display. Here you can see that you are exporting all the GPIO pins. Then you set the direction of each of these GPIO pins and then you set the value for them. Here you open the device. After you open the device, you send a message to the IOCTL. Uh, you send a message from the IOCTL function. Um, this is just to check whether the device has been opened and you are setting the SPI mode, bits per word, max speed. Uh, max speed. Now you put a while loop and uh, you continuously measure the distance that has been uh, calculated. The distance measured is put into the distance current and then you calculate the previous distance and the current distance. If the previous distance is uh, if the if the user is moving closer to the dog then a particular set of uh, pattern is displayed uh, if the user is moving away from the jog then the particular set of uh, pattern is displayed that is what has been implemented here uh, then the next thread is the ultrasonic distance thread this is the thread which is used for measuring the distance actually the obstacle away from the dog here you can see that um, the, uh, this is this is the part that generates the trigger pulse Mm, this is uh, you are doing a polling at the echo port to detect the rising and the falling edges as soon as the rising edge is detected the time rising is noted down uh, and when the falling edge is detected the time falling is noted down the difference between these two will give you the distance between the obstacle Now uh, let's look at this on the task 2 where the ultrasonic driver has been implemented the ultrasonic driver uh, uh, has uh, mainly two functionalities write and read the write is to invoke the write is the function that will be invoked through system calls from the user application and uh, it is to tell the driver that I need to measure the distance now uh, so write internally uh, generates a trigger pulse and sends it to the ultrasonic sensor the read function is used to read the value after the write uh, so that it gets the distance that is away from the uh, that the user is away from the dog an interrupt handler has been created for this so that which continuously monitors uh, the rising and the falling edges let's look let's have a look at the code Uh, this is the code for it. He, here you can see that uh, this is the interrupt handler which is waiting for uh, rising edge and the falling edges. As soon as the rising edge is detected, the rising time is noted down. As soon as the falling edge is detected, the falling edge is noted down. Falling time is noted down. Uh, falling time is noted down. Then you have open release method calls in this. This is the pulse right which uh, generates a pulse and sends it to the ultrasonic sensor so that indicating that I need to measure the distance now this is the pulse read where you have a busy flag this flag indicates that if the driver is still waiting for uh, if the driver is doing a particular calculation that means it is waiting for the distance to be measured then a busy status is returned back if the measured distance is already available then the difference between rising time and the falling time that is the pulse width is returned back to the user these are the file operations that have been exposed to the user applications here you have the initialization and uh, the exit functions that have been implemented 
then let's look at the SPI LED driver in this SPI and LED driver you have uh, two main functionalities IOCTL and the write functionalities the IOCTL function is used uh, to send a maximum of 10 patterns to the buffer of the device these patterns can be later displayed uh, onto the LED device the write function is uh, write function that has been developed uh, allows the user a functionality to send a sequence in which this pattern should be displayed and the time period for which they have to be displayed this has been implemented using a non-blocking call system uh, let's have a look at the code that has been implemented for this now you can see that uh, this is the SPI LED transfer function which basically uh, sends the messages you want to send uh, over the SPI device to the LED uh, and then this is the SPI LED open function this is your initialization of the LED matrix this is after initialization clearing the matrix uh, and then this is the SPI release function this is the thread SPI write function. In this function you can see that uh, you have uh, the sequence buffer is uh, sequence buffer of the SPI global uh, is put into this. The, uh, if the value is 0 0 then the SPI then the LED display is cleared. If the value is not 0 0 and has a sequence in it then these then that particular sequence is displayed onto the LED matrix. And uh, display onto the LED. This is the function that has been exposed to the user. This function receives uh, calls from the user application. It has a busy flag to indicate that user that the driver is busy displaying a particular pattern onto the LED matrix. This is the SPI LED IOCTL function. This can be called from the user. Uh, it actually receives the 10 patterns that the user wants to display and stores it into the buffer of the device. This is the SPI Pro function which is used to create the device here. Then you have SPI remove functions, SPI initialization and uh, SPI exit functions. Now let's have a look at the main function that has been developed for this. Uh, uh, to use these drivers which have been already uh, developed as part of this assignment. The, uh, the main function uh, basically provides user with four options. That is to see the dog controlled by the sensor, the number controlled by a number counter which is controlled by the sensor, then you have a display distance on a sensor and then a user defined pattern. So for each of these options a different thread is created. Different thread is created and uh, for the distance measurement a single thread is created. Single thread is created. Now let's have a look at... Uh, now let me show you how a number counter works here. This is the number counter. Here you can see that uh, the number values ranging from 0 to 9 have been stored. 0 to 9 have been stored. Uh, these patterns can be used to generate a pattern and send over the SPI to the LED device. Uh, here the distance is measured. Based on the distance, the uh, based on the distance, the counter runs. If the distance between the user and the ultrasonic sensor is low, the counter runs faster. If the distance is more, the counter runs slower. That is what has been implemented in this. The same concept of the dog also has been implemented in this program, where if the person is closer to the the uh, distance sensor then the dog runs faster if the person is moving away from the dog the dog runs slowly then I have also developed uh, an application here which uh, displays the distance the user is away from the sensor uh, so it is actually displaying the distance measured directly onto the LED display instead of just as a parameter we need it in this function in this program that is what has been implemented here where the distance measured is directly passed on to the LED display then this is the last part of the application where you define the patterns I have just used normal patterns A to J and then the sequence of the patterns that I need to display this is the pattern 0 that is displayed for 100 milliseconds pattern 1 displayed for 200 milliseconds and similarly and 0 comma 0 indicates that this is the end of the sequence so that is how uh, everything has been implemented. Now let me show you a demonstration of uh, how the code runs onto the Galileo board. Here you can see that uh, there are four files already present on the Galileo. Uh, main 3 underscore 1 dot o, main 3 underscore 2 dot o, pulse dot ko, spi underscore led dot ko. The first two are the user applications, the next two are the module drivers. Let me now run the first application to demonstrate the task 1.
now you can see that uh, there is a dog being displayed uh, as the obstacle moves closer to the sensor the dog starts running faster when the obstacle is moving away the dog slows down its speed the dog even changes its direction based on the movement of the obstacle now let me show you the part 2 of the assignment in the part 2 of the assignment the drivers have been developed so the uh, SPI dev needs to be uninstalled uh, that is what has been done now and then I am installing my drivers which have been developed I'll run the user application to test these drivers you can see that user is provided with four options uh, the first one is to see the dog controlled by the sensor the second one is to see a number counter which is controlled by the sensor the third one is to display the distance on the sensor fourth one is a very basic one which is uh, to display the user different pattern onto the sensor now let me start with the second one as first one has been already demonstrated uh, where a number is counted uh, and uh, based on the distance uh, it counts fast or slow as you can see in this video now that uh, the counter is happening from 00 to 99 as and when the object moves closer to the sensor the counter starts counting faster you can see that now when the object is moving away the counter slows down now let me demonstrate the third task that has been developed for this uh, here the display I am going to display the distance measure directly onto the LED screen uh, so I am selecting the option 3 and I am going to run it now you can see that uh, the maximum distance it can measure is 99 centimeters due to the limitation of the device uh, as the object moves closer to it it measures its distance it shows 10 this is 10 centimeter is the object distance now as you move the object away the distance is changing when you again bring it closer the distance again decreases so the distance of the object to the transmitter is being displayed onto the LED screen I hope you enjoyed this video presentation thank you for uh, having a look at my video